Good morning, everyone. Good morning. All right. Yes, it's good to see you. Uh, if you believe the Lord has added you to the Fellowship of Amazing Grace Community Church, speak to one of the elders, please. And please come on the 28th uh, and be in the new members class. The, uh, we'll have a meal. Uh, so you'll, after service, Brother Leroy will be preaching the 28th. Then after service, we'll have a meal for those who are going to stay for the membership class. Brother Johnny will be teaching that. And it'll be very good. So please, uh, please speak to one of the elders if you believe the Lord has added you to this fellowship. Um, I've been looking at the resurrection celebration. That's been the theme last Sunday and today and will be the theme next Sunday. And it's a joy to be with you. It's a joy to stand before you and preach. It is a great, great joy. So, if you would please stand, we're going to read from the Word of God, Matthew 28, verses 1 through 10. Now, after the Sabbath, near the dawn of the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. Now, in the other Gospels, it tells us they're carrying spices with them. They're going to the tomb not to see a resurrected Lord. They're not expecting him to be anything but dead, okay? Because that's the reason they have the spices. So they're not going out to greet the risen Lord. They're going to anoint a dead man's body. And a great earthquake had occurred, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled away the stone from the opening of the tomb, and he sat on it. The angel, uh, angel's appearance was like lightning. His clothes were white as snow. The guard shook, paralyzed with fear at the sight of him, and became like dead men, pale and immobile. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who has been crucified. He is not here, for he has risen, just as he said he would. Come. See the place where he was lying. Then go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead. And behold, he's going ahead of you into Galilee as he promised. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. So the women left the tomb. And I want you to know I don't believe they're carrying their spices. These girls are running. They're getting it. So the women left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy, and they ran to tell the good news to the disciples. And as they went, suddenly Jesus met them, saying, Rejoice. And they went to him and took hold of his feet and homage and worshipped him as the Messiah. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to leave for Galilee, for there will they see me just as I promised. Father, we thank you for this day. We praise you for your great kindness, your love, and your mercy. And we thank you, Lord, O oh God, that the resurrection is a continual celebration. And we thank you, Lord, O oh God, that we would be just like Mary and Mary Magdalene and the other Mary and all the other disciples. Nobody was waiting on, at that tomb on Sunday morning. You told them you would rise from the dead on the third day, but they're not out there. Nobody's out there, Lord, except the guards. And Lord, we would be like them, faithless, doubtful, fearful, wondering if the leaders were coming to get us next. But Lord, you met them. You met them suddenly. And you told them, you commanded them to rejoice. And today, blessed Lord, we're under that same command from you to rejoice. Not every now and then, but all the time. Because our Lord and our Savior has risen from the dead. Our Lord and our Savior is at the right hand of God. 
our Lord and our Savior is coming to receive us unto himself, that where he is, there we may be also. And so, Lord, we thank you. Now speak to us this morning, Lord, through your word, for your glory, and we praise you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Well, the, the Easter signs are gone. We talked about that. The Easter signs are gone. Uh, I put up those signs, and two or three times I like to fell over the ditch. <laughs> the Lord is so kind. You know, I'm out there, and, 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 and I put my right foot in the wrong place, and I'm, you know, I'm starting over in that ditch. And that would be quite a scene if you're driving by to see Pastor Harold. I roll really good. I've got a good roll. <laughs> but anyway, I don't bounce anymore. My bouncing days are over with. But I put those signs up and I took those signs down. And so the Easter signs, they're gone. Easter has come and gone. But the resurrection celebration never ends. It continues. It never ends. It's all day and every day. It's morning, noon, and night. It's Monday through Sunday. It's today and every day. It's now and forever. Now and forever. I want you to notice three times in these ten verses the two Marys were told to remember. You listening? Jesus says to us today here in this place, remember. Three times in ten verses. Verse 5, <clears throat> But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. For I know that you're looking for Jesus who had been crucified. He is not here, for he has risen, notice, just as he said he would. You've already been told that this would happen, girls. He has risen just as he said he would. Verse number 7, the angel again. Then go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead, and behold, he's going ahead of you into Galilee as... He promised. He had already told them that he would rise from the dead and he would meet them in Galilee. He told them that. Girls, remember. Remember. And then in verse 10, and Jesus said to them, to the girls, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary, do not be afraid and go tell my disciples to leave for Galilee and there they will see me just as I promise, girl, you, you remember now, don't you? So the angel twice said he's going to do it, just as he said. And then uh, the Lord Jesus himself said, just as I promised. So three times in ten verses, we are told to remember. They were told to remember, and you and I are told to remember. Why? Because we are so prone to forget. Now, I'm, as I'm getting older, my proneness of forgetting is increasing. Any of y'all experiencing that? Yeah? Somebody said, well, what, what was that a while ago? I said, that, that was a while ago. You know? But listen to this, this. The children of Israel saw the miracle of God parting the Red Sea. I mean, can you, I mean, they're standing there. Moses sticks out that staff and God parts that sea and they walk across that, 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 that sea floor on dry ground. Can you imagine the walls of water on both sides and they're walking through the sea? And to get to the other side, here comes Pharaoh, his army, and they go into the, into the middle of the sea and the Lord just puts the water back down. I mean, what would you be doing? What would I be doing? I mean, we, they were rejoicing. They were having a big time. They were worshiping the Lord on the other side. Not only were they delivered, but their enemies were destroyed. And three days later, three days, not three months, three years, three days later, they're complaining and murmuring, belly aching. If you've been doing any of that lately, I want you to know the Lord God hates it. He despises murmuring, complaining, and belly aching. 
because each, each of those say he's not doing right. He doesn't know best. It's an insult to him. But we naturally have that ability to do those three things. So, just three days, and they forgot. They forgot. In Matthew 16, the disciples hear Jesus say the leaven of the Pharisees, and they got to talking to one another. Did you bring any bread? No, I didn't bring. Did you bring it? No, I didn't bring. We didn't bring any bread. He's talking about the fact that we don't have bread. And Jesus knew what they were thinking and talking among themselves. And he said, you have so little faith. You're concerned about bread. Don't you remember the 5,000 and the five loaves? And how many basketfuls you took up? Or don't you remember the 4,000 and the seven loaves and how many baskets you took up? You have so little faith. They had forgotten. Here it is. They're walking with the Lord of glory, the King of kings, the Son of the living God. God himself walking in a man's body on this earth, and they forgot. They forgot. In Revelation chapter 2, the church at Ephesus had forgotten also. Wow. They had forgotten and forsaken their first love of Jesus. He said in verse 5 of Revelation 2, remember therefore. What's he saying? What's he saying? Remember. Remember. You forgot. He's saying remember therefore from where you have fallen Repent and do the, the works you did at first. If not, I will come to you and remove your lampstand from its place unless you repent. They've forgotten. Now, he, he commended them, but then he condemned them because they had forgotten. Brothers and sisters, have we forgotten? Have we forgotten? Our forgetfulness is so bad. Are you listening? Our forgetfulness is so bad that the Lord instituted the Lord's Supper, and one of the reasons He instituted the Lord's Supper was that you and I would remember. When we celebrate the Lord's Supper, it's so we will remember. Listen to the Word of God, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body which is for you. Do this in what? Come on, I can't hear you. In remembrance of me. When you take this bread, you remember me. Remember me. The implication is we really are apt at forgetting him. Okay? And then he said in the same way he also took the cup after supper saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in, in remembrance of me. You forget me. When you do this remember me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Je Jeremiah chapter 2 and verse 32, we read in the Word of God, Can a virgin forget her ornaments, or a bride her attire? Yet my people have forgotten me days without number. This is the Lord saying, my people have forgotten me days without number. He said, it's almost uncountable. If it wasn't for the fact that I'm the Lord of glory, it's just like with, it's almost unmeasurable. They've forgotten me so many days. And then in James chapter 1, verse 23 through, through 25, but be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man who looks intently at his natural face in a mirror. Did you do that this morning? I walk into the bathroom, I turn to that mirror and I go, ah! You know, Debbie calls it my, 
she, she'll tell me, she said, you're up. <laughs> I have to get my fuzz down, you know? Looks like two little horns. She says that really is picturesque, you know, two little horns over here. But anyways, you, I look in the mirror and it's, it's frightening. But he said, he, he, James said, this man looks intently in the, at his natural face in the mirror, for he looks at himself and goes away and at once, at once, forgets what he was like. But, mark this one here, verse 25, but the one who looks into the perfect law, the law of liberty, that's into the Word of God. Are you listening? The one who looks into the law of God, the law of liberty, the perfect law, and perseveres in looking into the Word of God, the perfect law, being no hearer who forgets but a doer who acts, he will be blessed in his doing. And the blessing is you don't forget. You don't forget. It kills forgetfulness. When your Bible's got dust on it, you have forgotten him many days. When you know nothing about a time of prayer, you have forgotten him many, many days. You can't rejoice because you don't remember because you have forgotten. You with me? The hymn by Robert Robinson says, Prone to wonder, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. Here's my heart, Lord, take and seal it. Seal it for thy courts above. That's what we need to be saying to the Lord. I'm prone to leave you, Lord, I feel that. I'm prone to leave the God I love, but here's my heart, Lord. Take and seal it. Seal it for thy courts above. Jesus had told them he would suffer. He told them he would die. He told them he would rise from the dead on the third day. He told them he would meet them in Galilee. The two mayors and all the disciples had forgotten. None of them remembered his word. They, had, they would have seen, if they had remembered his word, they would have been there at the tomb waiting for the sun to rise and the Lord of glory to come out of his grave. But they weren't there. If we're going to constantly be rejoicing, which we're commanded to, over the resurrection celebration, we must remember. You cannot go on in forgetfulness. You have to remember. To do so, listen to me. To do so, we must daily rehearse and review and remind ourselves in his word as to who he is and what he has done. See, so when, I, when I read this, it tells me about the God of this Bible, who he is, and it tells me about what he has done. You with me? And so every day we've got to reload. Now, if you haven't reloaded this morning, we saw turkey hunters. We were going to pick up Beverly and, and Sharon and men getting out of the truck, all dressed up in their hunting gear and got their shotguns, rifles, whatever. And they're going out to hunt. Turkey hunters. Those men have to have bullets. Somebody had to reload them. There's men who have gunpowder at their house and they reload their own bullets. Every day you've got to reload. When I wake up in the morning, my reloading process has to start. Are you with me? You get in the Word of God, you think about the Lord of glory, you pursue uh, knowing Him, so you rehearse every day His awesomeness and the amazing things that He has done for you. Jerry Bridges said, preach the gospel to yourself every day. Okay, so here we go now. This is Harold preaching to Harold. Are you ready? This is, this is my sermon. This is how it starts. Self, you were lost, doomed, and damned to an eternal hell. Self, hell was to be your home forever and ever and ever and ever. 
where the worm dies not and the fire is never quenched, where there's no escape, no relief, and no end. Self, you had no ability, no strength to save yourself. You couldn't deliver you. You couldn't merit favor with God. You had no ability to turn your situation around, self. Self, all your deeds of righteousness were like filthy menstrual rags in the sight of the thrice holy God. Your very best is awful. The very best you have is awful. Awful, awful. Seth, you were dead in sin and a slave to sin. You were dead in sin and a slave to sin. Seth, but God sent his son to be your savior. He sent his son to be your savior. Seth, Jesus Christ came into the world to be the Lamb of God who would take away your sin. Are we doing okay? Is that sermon okay with you? Seth, his present life, excuse me, his perfect life made him a perfect sacrifice for your sin. He became sin for you, though he never sinned, so that his perfect righteousness might be put to your account. Woo! Glory. Glory. I get the chill bumps thinking about that. Oh, woo. Mm. Self, you turn from your sin and trust in him, and he will, you will be justified by your faith, and will, you will have peace with God. Wow. Turn from your sin, self. Trust in him who loved you and died for you, and you will be justified, meaning that God will treat you just as if you never sinned. Never, ever you bring up sin, the Father says, what sin are you talking about? What sin are you talking about? I punished that sin. I removed that sin in my son. Sev, you shall never perish, never, neither shall, can anything or anyone pluck you out of the hand of your almighty God. Wow. When he does it, he does it. He does it completely. He does it eternally. It's not my hold on him. It's his hold on me. Dear ones, please, we, we, we can't hold on. We will never hold on. Never, ever, ever. But he will never let go. He will never let go. Seth, Seth he dwells in Every believer, he dwells in you by his Holy Spirit. Seth, his Holy Spirit transforms every believer little by little into the very character of the Lord Jesus Christ. Seth, and he that started this great work, he will complete it. He, he will not stop. He will finish it. He will complete it even unto the day of his coming. Seth, when we see him, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. Mm. Seth, he has gone to heaven to prepare a place for you, and he's coming again to receive you unto himself, that where he is, there you may be also, Seth. Wow. Seth, right now, right now, Seth, you are a child of God, but it does not yet appear what you shall be like. But when he appears, you shall be like him because you will see him as he is. Self, therefore, purify yourself. That's what we need to be doing. We need to be remembering and rejoicing, never forgetting. Remember, yes, remember. Do you recognize this map over here? That's the map of the continent of Africa. And over here on the other side is uh, one of the British explorers. There were several of them. And they're in the jungle and they're expo exploring new species that they know nothing about and new uh, plants that they know nothing about. 
Well, they come out of the jungle and they're on an open area, but on the edge, other edge of this open area is a cliff. And it's hundreds of feet down to jagged rocks and water flowing below. And, but when they peek over the edge of the cliff, about 100 feet down on a ledge, there's a flower they have never seen before. Don't know what it is. And they want that flower. Well, this, this little boy comes out of the jungle. And they motion for him to come. And so they go over to the edge and they point down. And he looks over those, those men. They're standing back, sort of. But he just walks up there and just looks right over the edge of the cliff. And he sees the flower. They take a rope and tie it around one of, their, them, of themselves, one of the, the explorers, and they show him what they want to do to him. And so they take the rope off and they're going to hand it to him and he takes off running back into the jungle. And these men are greatly disappointed because they thought, here's our hope of getting that flower. And he's gone. A little while later, they heard a noise in the jungle again. And here comes a little boy with a grown man. And the two of them walk up to the explorers and the grown man is so repulsive to look at. His face is scarred all over. Any area of his body that's exposed to them is scarred. Great scars, big scars. The little boy grabs a rope he puts it around his waist, ties it. He goes over to the cliff, and the man with the scars lets him down. 100 feet down he goes. He scoops up this exquisite flower, and the man pulls him back up. He takes the rope off. He's handed the flowers to the explorers, and they're all thrilled to death, but they don't understand. They're grown men. There were several of them. They're, more, they're stronger than the man that came back with the boy but they don't understand. You see, a few weeks ago, or a few months back, rather, the chief of the village said, don't go outside of the village compound because the lions are on the prowl. Well, the little boy disobeyed. He didn't do what he was told. And he went outside the compound of the village, and uh, all of a sudden, in the village, they heard a scream. And it was that boy. And this man heard that scream. He grabbed his spear and he took off running. The little boy is running on a path and the lion is behind him and the lion is gaining ground. And the little boy goes over this knoll in the path and that lion jumps in the air with claws, all claws out, mouth wide open, He's going to get his prey. And this man stepped in between. And while the lion was in the air, he shoved his spear into the lion's chest. But the lion didn't die until he mauled and clawed and bit that man. That man was that boy's elder brother. When they asked him to go off that cliff, he couldn't see any scars. He didn't know whether those men cared anything about him or not. And he runs back to the village to get the man that he knows he will give his rope to. If you're here today and you haven't given the rope of your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, you need to do so today. He's the only one you can give that rope to. He's the only one who can hold you and protect you. He is the only one who can save you. He's the man with the scars. They didn't know, but it was because of the scars, that little boy would trust his life into the hands of that man. What's the little boy doing? He's teaching us. 
You see, every day, every day this little boy was given a great gift. He saw the scars. And when he saw the scars, he remembered and he rejoiced. And when you and I see the scars, and we can't see the scars if we don't look for them. We can't see the scars if we don't search for them. We can't see the scars if we're not passionate about seeing them. We will not see them. But he saw those scars every day, and he knew he could give the rope of his life to that elder brother. And you can give the rope of your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. If you'll keep your eyes on his scars, you will kill forgetfulness, and you will remember, and you will rejoice. When you're not rejoicing, it's because you've forgotten. When you're not rejoicing, it's because you have forgotten. Because if you remember, you can't help but rejoice. You can't help it. I tell somebody, I, I got the can't help it. I got the can't help it. When you remember you can't help it, you're going to rejoice. You're going to sing. You're going to praise. You're going to give glory to God because you remember the scars. You remember those scars. Have you looked at them today? Have you looked at him today? The shame he suffered left its brand in great big wounds in either hand. Since penalty he designed to meet did tear and scar his blessed feet. The condemnation by him born marred his brow with print of thorn. Trespasses of guilt for which he died left him with a riven side. But mine, mine was the shame and the penalty. The sins were mine, it was for me. He felt the nails, the thorns, the spear. For love of me those scars appear, and hands and feet, and side and brow, beholding them I can but bow. Myself, a living sacrifice for him who paid so dear a price. You'll never forget if you remember the scars. And you can prove whether you're remembering by saying, am I rejoicing? Answer that question. Am I rejoicing? Am I rejoicing? Well, things are going wrong, Brother Harold. This and that and the other is not going right. I've got this problem. I've got that problem. He is still the risen Lord of glory no matter what we've got. Amen. And we need to rejoice in Him. In Him. These things will soon pass away. Our light affliction, which is just for a moment, works for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. It's just for a moment. Oh, it hurts. I go next Thursday. That doctor tells me to, now you look over here. <laughs> and I'm thinking, I'm going to look right at you. <laughs> I, I hit people that hurt my eye. <laughs> But I, I look over here, and, he's, and, uh, and I'm looking this way, and he shoots me over the, this way, and uh, I don't like it at all. But I want you to know I can sit in that chair and rejoice because Jesus is risen, and I'm not going to forget. God help us not to forget. Look at the scars. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day. Praise you for your great kindness, your love, and your mercy. Thank you, Lord, for the privilege of being together. And Lord, I pray that if anyone in this building has forgotten that right now we would all look at the scars, the hands, the feet, the side, and the brow. Beholding them, we can but bow ourselves a living sacrifice. For him who paid so dear a price. O oh Lord, O oh Lord, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you.
So, Father, please, in Jesus' name, if anybody in this building hasn't handed the rope of their life to you, I pray, Lord Jesus, you would cause them to turn it over now. You'd move upon them by your spirit, and they would gladly hand the rope of their life to you because they can trust the man with the scars. And we praise you, Lord, and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Y'all going to sing? Okay. Let me get out of your way. All right. Y'all please stand, and uh, we'll sing. My